الحمد للہ رب العالمین السلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم السلام علیکم ایوری ون آئی ہوپ یو ڈوئنگ ویل سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کنٹینیو دا اسٹوری آف پرافٹ نو علیہ السلام وی بین ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ حضرت نو ان دا لاسٹ کپل آف کلاسز اینڈ ناؤ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا اسٹوری آف حضرت نو بیسڈ آن سم مور آیات فرام دا قرآن اینڈ ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ سم آیات فرام سورا خود So what are the learning objectives for this session? One learning objective is what did Prophet Nuh alayhi salam invite his nation towards? So keep that in mind. What was his basic invitation? What was he calling his people to? Number two, what objections did the nation have against Prophet Nuh alayhi salam? So when Prophet Nuh invited them, what did they say? What, how did they object? And number three, How did Prophet Nu alayhi salam respond to their objections? So there is an argument, a back and forth. We'll see what objection came and then how did Prophet Nu alayhi salam respond to the objection. Okay, so now we are going to go over the ayat, Surah Hud, which is Surah number 11. And we will be going over ayat 25 through 30. And as we have done before, I'm going to read slowly. And then I want you to read after me. And once we've read these ayat, then we are going to look at the translation. So let's do ayat 25 and 26 first. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa laqad arsalna nuhan ila qawmihi inni لکم نذیر مبین اللہ تعبد اللہ اللہ انی اخاف علیکم عذاب یوم علیم سو لیٹس ٹرانسلیٹ دس ولقد ارسلنا نوحن اینڈ انڈیڈ وی سینٹ نو الا قوم ہی ٹو ہیز پیپل Inni lakum, and he said, Indeed, I am to you Nazirum Mubin, a clear warner. Allah ta'abudu, that you worship none, illallah, but Allah. Inni surely akhafu alaykum, I fear for you, azaba yawmin alim. The punishment of a painful day. Okay, then ayat number 27. فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا وَمَا نَرَاكَ تَبَعَكَ قومی ارائی تم ان کن تو اعلیٰ بہ نتم میں ربی و آتانی رحمتم من اندی فمیت علیہ کم انل زیمو کموہا و ان تم لہا کاری ہون So I hope you are reciting after me. That's why I'm going slowly. Now for 27 and 28, the meaning. فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ So the chiefs of his people who were disbelievers said, مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرَ مِثْلَنَا We see that you are just a human like us. وَمَا نَرَاكَ تَبَعَكَ And we do not see any have followed you. Illa ladhina hum arazilunah. 
but those who are the lowest of us. Badiya ra'yi, without thinking. Wama nara lakum, and we do not see in you. Alayna min fadlim, any superiority above us. Bal nazunukum kazibin, rather we consider you liars. And then the meaning for ayat 28. Qala ya qawmi. Nuh alayhi salam said, O my people, ara'aytum, tell me, in kuntu ala bayyinatim mir rabbi, if I have with me clear proof from my Lord, wa atani rahmatam min indihi, and he has bestowed mercy upon me from himself, fa ummiyat alaykum which is hidden from your sight. Anulzimu kumuha, shall we force this upon you, wa antum laha karihun, while you are averse to it. Okay, now I'm going to recite ayat 29 and 30. Wa ya qawmi la as'alukum alayhi mala, in ajriya illa ala Allah illa ala Allahi wa ma ana bi taridil ladhina amanu innahum mulaqu rabbihim walakinni araakum qawman tajhalun wa ya qawmi man yansuruni Min Allah in taratuhum afala thakarun. Okay, now the meaning. Waya kaumi and O my people, la as alukum alayhi mala. I do not ask any wealth from you for preaching it. In ajriya illa ala Allah. My reward is only from Allah. وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And I am not going to drive away those who have believed. إِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ Indeed, they will meet their Lord. وَلَكِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ But I see you, قَوْمًا تَجْحَلُونَ A people who are ignorant. وَيَا قَوْمِ And O oh my people, May yansuruni min Allah, who would help me from Allah in taratuhum if I drive them away? Afala zakkarun. So would you still take no lesson? So now uh, what I'm going to do is simply read through the meaning of ayat 25 through 30. And we sent Nu salam to his people, and he said. Indeed, I am to you a clear warner that you worship none but Allah. Surely I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. So the chiefs of his people who were disbelievers said, We see that you are just a human like us and we do not see any have followed you but those who are the lowest of us without thinking. And we do not see in you any superiority above us. Rather, we consider you liars. Prophet Noah salam said, O oh my people, tell me, if I have with me clear proof from my Lord, and he has bestowed mercy upon me from himself, which is hidden from your sight, Shall we force this upon you while you are averse to it? And O oh my people, I do not ask any wealth from you for preaching it. My reward is only from Allah and I am not going to drive away those who have believed. Indeed, they will meet their Lord, but I see you a people who are ignorant. And O oh my people, who would help me from Allah if I drive them away? So would you still take no lesson? 
Okay, so as we normally do, I'm now going to go over each ayat and then the explanation. So ayat number 25 is وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ إِنِّي لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُّبِينٌ And indeed we sent Nuh salam to his people and he said, Indeed I am to you a clear warner. So what was Prophet Nuh salam's call to his nation? So he told his people, you must obey me and stay away from Allah's disobedience or else you may get punished by Allah for your disobedience. Every messenger was sent only towards his own nation. But the Holy Prophet wasallam was sent as the final messenger towards the entire or the whole of humankind or mankind or all of humanity. So this is an important point even when we look at this ayat number 25 Allah says وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ قَوْمِهِ means his nation. So Nuh salam was sent to his particular nation whereas the Prophet Muhammad wasallam was sent for all of humanity. Okay next ayat is number 26. Allah ta'budu illallah inni akhafu alaykum adhaba yawmin aleem. So Prophet Nuh salam, his message was that you worship none but Allah. Surely I fear for you the punishment of a painful day. So this is what Prophet Nuh salam said to his nation. Now what did Prophet Nuh salam invite his nation towards? He invited them to the worship of Allah alone. So what's a practical aspect over here? All the prophets gave the same fundamental message to their people and started their invitation towards Tawheed with this same point. So what is Tawheed? Tawheed is the oneness of Allah or the oneness of God and all prophets starting from Prophet Adam salam and then Prophet Nuh salam and all subsequent prophets started with this initial and fundamental message calling people towards Tawheed or the oneness of Allah. Warning those who did not accept the call to Tawheed and who stayed adamant on shirk was also a part of the prophet's call. So what does this mean? So the first point was calling people towards Tawheed. But then after that also came a warning. So if you do not come to Tawheed, if you keep engaging in shirk, then there will be a painful punishment for you. So the second part, which is a warning, was also something that all the prophets did. So that is why inviting others to leave the path of disbelief and shirk is a sunnah of the prophets. So the lesson in this for us is that when we see around us people who are doing shirk in any form, so worshipping things or following things other than Allah, making things other than Allah their top priority, which as we've discussed before is one type of shirk, calling people away from that and calling people to Allah is the way of all the prophets and therefore we should also follow this way or the sunnah of the prophets. Now did all the people from Prophet Nu's nation believe in him? This is a question. And as you might recall from the story that we have studied earlier, very few people believed in him. Most of them remained on the path of shirk and disbelief. In fact, as you might recall, Prophet Nu salam gave dawah or he called people for 950 years and despite preaching for so long, very few people accepted the deen. What warning did Prophet Nuh give to those who rejected the truth? He warned them about the punishment of a painful day. So now what's this painful day? So actually there are two painful days. In the sense of this world, he was warning them of the day when the big flood will come, when they will all be destroyed. So that was a painful day in this dunya, in this world. And then he would also warn them, warn them of the day of Qiyamah. So when people will be raised again, that will be another very difficult day. So again, what's the painful day? It means the day of calamity. 
it means both the day of judgment and the day on which the flood began and the nation of Prophet Noah was drowned. In both cases, the intent is to warn the disobedient nation of destruction and death. So remember the two key points first calling towards Tawheed and then the other point was to give warning to those who do not accept this message. Okay, now next ayat number 27. فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ مَا نَرَاكَ إِلَّا بَشَرًا مِثْلَنَا وَمَا نَرَاكَ اتَّبَعَكَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُنَا بَادِ الرَّأْيِ وَمَا نَرَا لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلٍ بَلْ نَظُنُّكُمْ كَاذِبِينَ So the chiefs of his people who were disbelievers said, we see that you are just a human like us and we do not see any who have followed you but those who are the lowest of us without thinking and we do not see in you any superiority over us rather we consider you liars. So this was the message from the chiefs of the people of Hazrat Nuh So what objections did the nation have against Prophet Nuh They actually had four objections. One is that he is a person from among our nation. So the people were saying that if a prophet is going to come, somebody is going to give us the message of Allah, that should be a very special person, perhaps an angel. But they were saying to Prophet Nuh that you are just an ordinary person from our nation. Objection number two, only the poor and lowly among us have believed in him. So this objection was that the people who were poor and they did not have too many blessings from Allah from a worldly sense, they are the ones who are following Prophet Noah So the leaders of the nation were arrogant, just like there was arrogance in the story of Prophet Adam salam. Here again, arrogance is the reason why many people are staying away from the true message, the message of Prophet Noah salam. Then the third point or the third objection was that he is not a wealthy man. So the people of Prophet Noah the leaders felt that if a messenger is coming, somebody is representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that person should be a rich man. And their final objection, objection number four, is that he is a liar, ma'az Allah, Allah forbid. So they were basically saying to Prophet Noah that what you are saying is not true. And we say Ma'az Allah, Allah forbid, because it is difficult to say something like this. We are just quoting what the leaders from Prophet Salam's nation said. So the nation held the opinion that poor and lowly people of the society believed in him, which did not prove his superiority above them. If the people of high status and lineage wealthy chiefs and intellectuals had believed in them, they would have accepted his superiority over them. So notice this is something that even happens today. We look at what the wealthy people or the people of status do and when the poor people are doing something that does not impress us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us here that truth is does not people accepting the truth, it doesn't matter whether they are rich or poor. So in, in the eyes of Allah, true piety or true greatness is based on one's taqwa or one's God consciousness, not based on wealth or status. So every prophet had to face a similar reaction from his nation. That is, the accusations were similar. So the accusations that Prophet Noah had to face were similar to the accusations that other prophets had to face. For example, the people of Makkah used to say that the Prophet ﷺ was a man just like themselves and that angels should have been prophet, not humans. So the sorts of objections that the people of Nuh made, the same objections were made to Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. And one of the reasons over here for these surahs, among many other reasons, they are obviously lessons for us. But these surahs were also very helpful for the Prophet ﷺ. They motivated him because the Prophet ﷺ was being told by Allah that, look, Prophet Nuh 
preached for 950 years and even at that time people made the same sorts of objections that the Quraysh are doing right now. Okay, now ayat number 28. Qala ya qawmi ara'aytum in kuntu ala bayyinatim mir rabbi wa atani rahmatam min indihi fa ummiyat alaykum so Nuh salam said, O oh my people, tell me, if I have with me clear proof from my Lord, and he has bestowed mercy, which means prophethood, upon me from himself, which is hidden from your sight, shall we force this upon you while you are averse to it? So how did Prophet Nuh salam respond to their objections? Remember there were four objections and now in this ayat we have Prophet Nuh salams response to the objections. He responded that he had clear proof with him that is guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had granted him prophethood and he invited them towards him. So he invited his people towards him. So here what is meant by being on a clear path? Prophet Nuh salam wanted to explain to his people that he had lived his life among them. They were all well aware of his character, his manners, his conduct. And now the people of his nation, they must reflect that he was a person of such character that he received revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his mercy. So Prophet Salam had such great character that Allah chose him as his prophet. They could not comprehend the state and reality of this revelation. He could only tell them about it, not show it to them. So Prophet Salam could only tell the people that look, the revelation has come from Allah. And the people of his nation had seen Prophet Salam all their lives. They knew he was a very upright man, an honest man, he always kept to his word and now why would he be lying about something that is so important? So in a sense, the character of Prophet Noah Salam was evidence that he was telling the truth. So what is meant by mercy i.e. prophethood not being visible to them? The meaning of Prophet Noah's statement is that the invitation to Tawheed which he was presenting had deep roots in the nature of man. He was steadfast on this instinctive proof and clear vision which is apparent to every man who has a clear insight. But those whose eyes are blind because of their stubbornness and refusal of the truth cannot benefit from this insight they will not be able to see this guidance, i.e. they will not be able to see this prophethood in Prophet Noah So the point here is that deep in our nature, we are actually aware of Allah. We are aware of our creator. Deep inside, we know that we did not just come out of nowhere. And this whole world and the universe that we see around us, inside we do recognize that this has been created by a great being which is Allah. So that is inside us. And when somebody with a, with spotless character, with the sort of character that Prophet Noah had, when such a person comes and delivers the message, those who are sincere and those whose hearts are clean, those who do not have arrogance and stubbornness, they would naturally accept the message. Whereas those who are arrogant, stubborn, they are occupied with their own thoughts and they, are, they think of themselves as being very high. In other words, they are arrogant. Those are the people who then reject the message. So in this ayat, there is also a reference to forcing guidance upon them. So what is meant by forcing guidance upon them? The nation of Prophet Noah is being asked, did he forcefully convince them about guidance and make them enter this mercy while they hate it and run away from it and did not wish to ponder on the clear proofs and evidence? So the point here is they are being asked a question, a rhetorical question that is Prophet Noah salam forcing this message on you even though you don't like it and 
The answer is that Prophet Noel was not forcing this on them. Prophet Noel was just communicating the message to them. The revelation came to Prophet Noel and he was sharing this in a very nice way with his people. So the responsibility of the messenger is to convey the message to others and then they decide. Nobody can force anyone to believe. So this brings us to the actual mission of the prophets. The prophets are responsible for delivering Allah's message to the people such that they accept it willingly without being forced. So no prophet ever forced anyone to accept. And in all this, there is a lesson for us. When we invite others towards Allah's deen, we should simply convey and communicate in a very nice way. We cannot force anyone to be a better Muslim or to become a Muslim. All we can do is follow the way of the prophets and the way of the prophets was to deliver the message in the best possible way. Now ayat number 29. <laughs> In Ajriya illa alallahi wa ma ana bitaridil ladina amanu innahum mulaku rabbihim walakinni arakum qawman tajhaloon. And O oh my people, I do not ask any wealth from you for preaching it. My reward is only from Allah, and I am not going to drive away those who have believed. Indeed, they will meet their Lord, but I see you a people who are arrogant. So what did Prophet Noah say to his nation regarding the reward for his call to Tawheed? He said that he did not ask for any wealth or reward in return from them. The prophets do not ask their people for any reward or wealth. They only seek the reward from Allah. The chiefs of his nation had asked Prophet Noel to remove the weak and poor believers from near him or from his gatherings and Prophet Noel rejected this. So there are some points here. The prophets would preach the message of Allah and they would not demand anything in return. So they had no worldly benefit in mind. They just wanted what was good for their people and their reward was with Allah. And the other point is that when the chiefs of the nations asked Prophet Noel to remove the weak and poor believers, Prophet Noel rejected. So now if we think about the life of the Prophet وسلم, our Prophet, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, the chiefs of Makkah demanded the same from the Holy Prophet وسلم, upon which Allah revealed the following ayat. Do not drive away those who call out to their Lord morning and evening seeking his pleasure. So this is from Surah Anam, which is Surah number 6, Ayat number 52. So the same thing happened with Hazrat Nuh and it also happened with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what action of his nation did Prophet Nuh regard as ignorance? So remember, Prophet Noel's people, especially the leaders, considered other people as inferior. So considering those who follow Allah and his messenger inferior and demanding Prophet Noel to drive them away was his nation's ignorance. So now what's a practical message out of this? Man's status and worth is not based on worldly wealth and riches. Rather, his honor and status is based on piety, faith, conviction, excellent character and good manners. That is why determining someone's status and honor based only on worldly possessions and wealth is ignorance. And as I mentioned before, the people who are respected in the eyes of Allah are those who have taqwa. So the more taqwa or God consciousness someone has, the greater the respect for that person in front of Allah. Okay, now the last ayat for today's lesson. This is ayat number 30. 
afala tazakkarun and oh my people who would help me from allah if i drive them away so would you still take no lesson so now how did prophet noah alayhi salam respond to the demand of driving the poor believers away from himself prophet noah alayhi salam refused to accept this demand because in allah's sight it is faith that is important not wealth he said that allah would be displeased if he drove them away so what's the practical lesson here we learn from prophet noah's statement that the one inviting towards the deen should not disassociate himself from the believers in order to please the non believers so this is very important if one is calling people towards the deen and those who accept the message are the poor people those who are not considered very high in society then those people are the most important so those who have accepted the message those who are calling people to the message should never reject anyone whether they are poor or rich so likewise we should not turn away from those who turn towards allah because he pays attention to those who seek his pleasure so when people come to allah whether they are rich or poor then we should be very good with them we should not turn them away because the people who have turned towards allah allah turns towards them so those are the people that we should be closest to so that is it for today's lesson i hope you learned a lot inshallah in the next lesson we will continue with the next ayat assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh